Welcome to Techidia Daily. I'm Dubisi Ekeke. Our topic today is Beyond Conga, Ajubia, winning Africa's e commerce market. I'll begin this conversation by looking at the challenges of e commerce in Africa. And I'll refer you to one of my well received articles in Harvard Business Review. In that article, I lay down some of the challenges which we continue to make it extremely very difficult for someone to build a strong, profitable e-commerce business in the African continent. When I say the African continent here, I'm really thinking the Sub-Saharan Africa, excluding South Africa. In other words, looking at Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda, and every other thing, excluding South Africa. One of the big problems is the issue of lack of trust. Some of the rich African citizens are not necessarily digital in terms of spending their money. You don't expect them to go on websites and put their credit cards and debit cards. These are the upper middle class. They don't have that confidence. So because of that distrust, we do not have the most profitable people possible participating in e-commerce business. It's also the issue of broadband. The cost of broadband relates relatively high, considering the purchasing power of the citizens, considering the earning power of the citizens. So it's only here that even when you begin to shop, you already spend the money because people do pay as you go, unless most parts of the developed world, where you pay the cost of your broadband at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month, irrespective whether you use it or not. But in Africa, it's pay as you go. And that means for you to actually browse, you have to pay. But the biggest part of this is really the logistics. E-commerce doesn't end on website. When the buyer finds the product and clicks, submit, buy, submit. That is actually where the build day begins. You have to transition and move that physical device, physical products, or whatever it is, from the warehouse to the house of the buyer. That logistical system is actually the most catalytic aspect of the e-commerce business. If you don't get it, and if you don't have it, it makes it very difficult to have an e-commerce operation. In Africa today, we don't have good postal system. We do not have good transportation system. Our cities are not interconnected. Interconnected, and it makes it extremely very difficult. Of course, the open market, most parts of the African continent, there are markets everywhere. Work on the traffic light, there is market. Work on the pothole, there is market. People are selling things across the street, and just like that, if you have money and you want to buy something, where to buy it is not necessarily a problem. And that makes it really very difficult to wait for five days or three days to get something if you buy it on the web. And the e-commerce company also has a very big disadvantage because you have to pay tax because you are a former sector economy. You participate in a former sector economy. But if you are, let's say, for instance, you're operating in Rwanda, where the fat is 18%, you have to pay that. Why the guy in the open market doesn't have to pay that? Because the construct of Africa is just an imagination. Market is extremely fragmented. And this fragmentation makes it difficult for you to scale because you have to manage the boundaries from Kenya, Naira, uh, Kenya to Tanzania, you come to West Africa, you have Nigeria, you have Ghana. There is no autonomous market. And some of these markets are extremely very small. And also, we are a continent of 1.1 billion people. But how many of them are serviceable? By looking at the literacy, of, literacy rate, there are so many Africans that cannot even get on the lawyer because they are not educated in the right way. So these are challenges. And they are going to become things that we have to fix or manage or contain if we want to have a dynamic, e-commerce sector in the continent. It's not a new thing. Conga, Jubia and others are not necessarily the new companies 
There have been people that tried this thing in the past, and most of them collapsed, failed, or shuttered, or retrenched. The Kalahari came out with an e-commerce model following Amazon.com. But they did not survive. In short, the day they were closing, they had a press release from NASPAS, a South African company that owned it, say it was a sad day for e-commerce in Africa and cited unprofitability as a reason. And so if you are very quick, <clears throat> and if you are really carried that you have to make profit in e-commerce in Africa, there is absolutely no way, at least in the short term, for you to actually stay in that business. Because it looks like a sinking hole where you just have to keep throwing good money. And Bokaliti also left. It's not an easy thing. The foreigners came, they were conquered by the market forces and environmental challenges. The present players, how are they doing? Conga, a very great company with great people, great business model, but operating in an environment <clears throat> that is extremely challenging, working in a sector that is tough. If you look for data from Kinevik, one of the big investors in Conga, that owns about 34% of the company. Invested 266 <clears throat> Swedish kroners. But today, that investment is worth 102 billion. 266 million Swedish kroner. Today is worth 102 million Swedish kroner. So essentially, this 266 is around, 20, is around $30 million. That money is significantly less than around 40 million. It had lost more than 50% of the value. That's not a very good deal. In short, between January and March 2017, according to their interim report for Q1 2017, they lost about 40% of the value. So that tells you Besides everything you read, everything you see, this is the state of the business. From the perspective of the investor that actually have a fiduciary responsibility in this take. And then let's look at Jubia. Jubia is more diverse. It has somehow consolidated most of its operations on our brand. The African Internet Group, so many entities, but all of them cable and all of them are under one. The Jumia job, Jumia market, Jumia, all of them. And that is to streamline operations, streamline cost, cut down cost by streamline operations. In 2015, it made 145 million euros in revenue. But in 2016, Jumia crashed down to 84 million euros. And that's about a difference of 42%. Of course, we can blame the commodity bust. We can blame the currency deterioration. We can blame the recession in Nigeria, one of its largest markets. But that is what the data says. We don't have to worry about it. That is what the data says. And that is also part of the problems why you have to benchmark your risk to the markets where you operate. That is it. It doesn't look good. That's that level of Roshoni revenue happened. And also look at how the traffic looks. The customers, are they shopping? As Lisa and Lisa, Koga is just going down the drain. And if you look through Jubia, you quickly recover. And you can actually look at this curve as an indicator of how the Nigerian populace is with the recession and recover from it. They are trying then you can see there is a significant traffic loss over this period. In short, by the time you move into these 12,000, 1,200, or these four figures, for you to move to 1,200 to, 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 to 1,200 or 1,800, you are looking at thousands of thousands of visitors because it, it becomes a little bit exponential for you to lose that, that level. So that tells you the traffic that they are. Okay. 
If you use Udala, uh, another e-commerce company in Nigeria, it's, it's the same pattern. They are all suing all these customers' trouble. So what is going to be the future? The, go to fu the future here is that who is going to win the e-commerce in Africa, or let me say Nigeria specifically, is going to be someone who is going to invest significant amount of money building solid infrastructure that can actually help you to lose a lot of money over many years and hopefully in future it can make money we expect the broadband cost to drop because if you look at the cost of broadband in 2012 what you can get for the same gig in 2017 <clears throat> you see that there has been a massive drop in cost it has been actually more than quadratic it has been exponential in some cases so this is very good and we expect that to continue to be the pattern so but the e-commerce is any person's game in nigeria anyone can win this game yeah, there is not really an e-commerce factor here because it's an issue that has not been able to scale most of the players are concentrated in the big cities and not even the whole parts of the cities they go to lagos they stay in victoria land Acadia, and Red Star. They are not moving even to most of the villages. And then they have forgotten places like Owere, Kanu, some parts of Kanu. No one is talking about them. No one is talking about Okigwe. No one is talking about Oshobo and so many big, great cities in Nigeria. No one is talking about them. Because the business is really having a postal system, which is a logistical system. Who is going to build a private postal office that can support such a network? of e-commerce operation in the country. Government, we don't expect it to do because it doesn't have the money. It doesn't even have the capital. It doesn't even have the strategy. So there is this illusion that also comes that we are 180 million potential customers in Nigeria. In reality, it could be 20 million people because we have not empowered our citizens. We have not provided them good jobs. We have not provided them good education. So even though we may have 180 million potential customers, only a 20 in serviceable. So out of that 20, how many of them are ready, are interested? These are people we can say they have decent employment. These are people we have they have decent level of literacy that they can get into the e-commerce world. So I do believe that in 2022 is going to be the magic year. We are a convergence of so many things to make it possible someone that has capital someone that has ability and risk factor can come into nigeria and compete for the markets the incumbents today are actually foreigners extension by making it possible creating awareness for people about the potentials of e-commerce but great things have to happen we have to see a company interested in infrastructure coming in to pave the way to improve the logistics we have to see a company that is also really very good in having a massive scale because it can afford it. And then we also expect post potentially uh, an issue that uh, we could solve the broadband cost once and for all, where it becomes significantly affordable that people don't even have to think about it. So that means that it is going to be a market anyone can compete. And don't just expect that people playing there today are going to be the people that win this. Of course, they can win it. They can also do the things that we are saying others can do. It is going to be a market that you have to be ready to bleed a lot of capital. But because they have been bleeding capital, it makes it extremely tougher for them. It makes it extremely difficult for them. It makes it extremely challenging for them. Because unlike someone who can come in at the phase where they don't have to spend a lot of capital. So, but of course, we wish everyone for playing a role in building the economy of Nigeria well. But, of, but we do believe the future of e-commerce has not actually been settled. Anyone can win this game in South Africa. I'm WC Ekekwe. Thank you for listening. Take care.